Hey, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone. It's Kate Richberg, and it is time for a very special episode of Bead Shop Live. We are jumping in here, so bear with me while I make everything I'm as Janice would say, well, I'll tell you this Janice story in just a second, because I think you guys will love it. But let me get myself in here and let me get Janice. Janice, are you there? Um, I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. All right. Yeah. All right. Here. Well, we're both going to be on in three, two, and one. There we are. Let's give us a little, a little uh, news, newsy background, I think. There we go. I'm also, let me do this just for now. The Kate and Janice names are up. So JP, the, the story, I'm going to kick this show off with a, with a Janice story because I okay. know that people love Janice stories. <laughs> and even if you don't, you're going to get one. Um, so way back in the day when we had our brick and mortar store, I've got my coffee for this story. I have my gin. Perfect. Your gin. Your gin and my gin. Um, I remember when someone was asking me yesterday, and I can't remember who it was. Um, oh, when we were talking with TierraCast, I was talking with Julie, and she said, Kate, how long have you guys actually been online? And I said, we've been online since 1996. Mm -hmm. We haven't sold things since 96, but we have had a website presence since 96 as beanshop.com and she was laughing and she said you know i remember when i would go on the world wide web to look at things she would always come to beanshop.com right and she said how did you guys do it and i said i actually what we did was and i'll do it here with one of these clipboards i remember standing in let me get a pen so it's true to life in the middle of the Hamilton Street original bead shop. And you said to me, Kate, let's get 20 items and put them online. And so I looked around the store with a clipboard and we started writing things down. Once we had those things written down, we had to photograph them remember and we fi figured out how we would photograph them and i remember laying those things out laying the beads out and you came to, to because because art direction was your gig that's what you did yeah. before you started bead shop right. right right and i remember i had the beads laid out and you came up to me and you moved a bead like a quarter <laughs> of an inch <laughs> and you said there you go. And I, and it really, and then I looked back, we looked back through the camera lens. So we had this big camera, we had all this stuff. I, we looked back through the lens and I said, cause in my head I said, oh God, Janice is, she's crazy. What's she doing? Moving that bead a quarter of an inch. And then I looked through the viewfinder and I went, oh, cause it actually made a difference. So I wanted to tell everybody this story because when you guys see this project that I'm going to put up on the, the board here in a second, it's those little pushes of a quarter of an inch that make the difference between a piece being just okay and being oh. incredible. So I wanted to share that with everybody because so sweet. it really, when you do these designs, it's really a, a lesson in balance and how many beads you put where and all of that kind of stuff. So that, um, so I thought I'd share that shared history. Oh, that's, that was, no, it great memories. That's what reminded me. Great yeah. memories. But it yeah. was, uh, but I, I just remember that as clear as day. Look at, you remember we had the camera, we had it up on a thing, we'd yeah. lay them out and then you would just go, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> we use something like an awl, you know. Right, right. An awl or the, the knotting tweezers. So yeah. yeah. We would go. Yeah. 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 Way yeah. back. Way back. Stand in the day. on a step stool 
to then yeah, be able that's to look right. into the camera view. To look yeah. down. Yes, exactly. Right. Yep. The early days. So uh, such the early days. Um, let me go ahead. I'm going to put the uh, let me add this to the stream. I'm going to put this kit, uh, the, the piece, and now I'm going to take our names out of here because uh, we can figure that out here. So bear with me. And of course, you guys, just as a reminder, um, let me fix my my camera's a little wonky. There we go. And let me get my pen out of here. Um, just as a reminder, if you've missed the kit, this one's called Sisterhood. If you've missed it, you'll be able to go right on to beadshop.com at noon, the second half releases. So we're going to actually end the broadcast maybe just a little earlier than noon um, so you guys can get ready to go. Um, the first half is sold out, but the second half, which is going to launch at noon Pacific time, if you're watching this live, it is Wednesday, December 9th. Um, so you'll be able um, you'll be able to grab it then. So if you're doing any more shopping, you may want to do that shopping beforehand because the rest of this kit is going to go uh, quickly. Let me turn this light on here just to get a little more light on the subject um, that helped maybe ever yeah. so slightly. Um, but let's talk about. Let me get back to. Let me take this off. Let me get back to the comments. We've got so many um people here janice watching and commenting it's great to have everybody here today well i miss moderating on youtube um, yeah well uh, Drea is over there on youtube thank um, you Drea. yeah and let me make sure i hope that my phone doesn't give out here but kate you we'll need to charge your phone I know. I always do. Yeah, I do. But now I'm now I'm worried. But don't, we're okay. Don't you have a charger by your I bed? Do. Hand I do. I have it right charger. here. I do. Maybe well, it's because I listen to too many podcasts. This oh, late at night. Well, we should be fine. Okay. Yes, with my headset. Um, so Janice, this project is called Sisterhood. Right. right. And so let's start with your inspiration. Let's start with the name. Well, it's it really came to me um, when I when I saw the pearls. I mean, they're they're such a lovely feminine uh, color that looks good on everybody, uh, like all skin types. You know, there's some pearls that like I couldn't wear. You know, uh, pearls that that don't look good with my skin, but this particular color they were an outstanding find and mm -hmm. i got so excited about them that i decided with you that we needed to to put together a kit and do something that really spoke to you know like tahoe and the how they kind of uh play off of uh leather like their pearls which are so refined and and special but then leather which is really so kind of rough and ready <clears throat> and so the the pearl represents in in women femininity the power of being a woman um, that we can be both uh feminine and soft and strong and powerful uh shout out to my goddaughter chelsea um for that i learned that even more from her the silver is symbolic of how it really represents a mirror that we look in to realize uh, uh, what we're in tune with and how powerful we are and strong. Um, and then the flower motif in the button and the charm represents to me the, the garden that we all tend to, to take care of ourselves, the way we nurture others and, um, and how it helps us flourish to be in the garden. And this was a year where I really think sisterhood mattered, mattered in my life. Um, I don't, I don't know if it mattered in yours, but just taking care of each other from a distance really required a lot of um, discipline and stick to itiveness. And yeah. um, so this one was just an easy, an easy breezy design. It just came. It was really. Yeah to do it was really fun 
And I remember, so when we thought about this, we this has actually been simmering for, I don't know, a couple months or so. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I we started with, um, let me pull out this kit. So, um, so you guys can see what you're going to get. And then we're going to go through this because if you don't, if you're watching this on replay and you don't nab the kit, don't be too um, despondent, right? Because you can, of course, go diving in your stash for things that you may have. We also carry some large hold pearls here at Bead Shop. And eventually we will also be stocking. This is a new color of leather for us that we're calling antique brown. Um, Lovely. I love it. It's really pretty. I don't know why my camera has been, is kind of showing a lot of red. My hands look really red. They're not quite that red in real life. So sorry about that. Um, the color's a little odd here, but maybe it will, um, maybe it will write itself. But this is a really pretty kind of antique kind of brown color. And then I'm going to dump the rest of this out. We made it so that you could get um, the regular Ceylon in brown. And we added four cards. And these cards are, how, how long are they? They're those? one yard. They're one, one yard each. So you've got four yards here. And I'm going to talk to you about how we're, you would kind of, um, uh, you know, put that kind of measured cut, out. For cut each them and measure and cut them. Yeah. <laughs> and then you used this uh, Happy Donut, which we love. Uh -huh. um, this is an eight inch strand of the freshwater pearl. And you can see it's a really soft pink. It's very, very oh. pretty. Um, I just love them. And so you get a whole um, strand of those guys. And we'll, sh we'll, we'll go ahead and kind of parcel these out as we use them. We've got a new charm, this really beautiful charm, mm -hmm. and this button that we're going to use. And you get a, a, a little jump ring to add it. And then we've given you some of the coiled spacers and some of the silver shadows to put mm -hmm. in your piece. Mm -hmm. So everything is right here on your desktop ready to use. Okay. So you had mentioned, JP, that the the project that you were influenced by, we put this in our Leather and Pearls project on beadshop.com, but you also mentioned our Tahoe projects, and I right. just grabbed a couple of these so you guys can see them. Let me get a little further out. Tahoe is a classic bead shop design, and you can see essentially it takes two strands of a 1.5 leather and then running down the center depending on the sizes of beads you use but you'd use a 0.5 or if you have beads that have large holes you could also use a one millimeter um so uh so that would work and then um this wrap the beads are on the center strand and then the two strands go um, along the outside. And you could certainly wear it as a necklace, which would look great. It, does. it does look great as a necklace. You could also just wrap and wrap and wrap and wear it as a bracelet. So this kind of has the same feel to it. Um, the leather that we added, we added a two, usually our leather comes in four yard increments, but this time we did it in two yards because that's all you really need um, for that. So, um, so if you um, do use leather at home and you've gotten it from bead shop and it's a four yard um, little nest, like we like to call them, then you'll use about half of that, just depending on how much uh, or how long you want this bracelet to be, right? So you could you could make it longer. If Kate, you were I, doing I, wanted, I wanted to say that if anyone is watching later and they don't have the large hold pearls, this mm -hmm. design is very adaptable to uh, thinner leather or mm -hmm. to other beads that you might have that will fit on uh, 1.5 or if you wanted to use 1.0 in this, you could go as thin mm -hmm. as that. It doesn't have to be pearls. It could be any beads with larger holes. Mm -hmm. And then each of these cards, I'm just affirming for Drea, since we did, I did measure this Ceylon. The Ceylon mm -hmm. cards, Drea, are indeed one 
yard of the sea lawn. I just pulled one off and it's ready to go. Yep. Christine is asking real quick what size the pearls are. I've got my um, my trusty they like eight millimeter caliper. I'm going to measure exactly. Let me see. I think I've got one floating around eight or here. nine, maybe. Bear with me. And they may vary slightly because they are a natural pearl. But let me get one. And you can see the holes are big, mm -hmm. like so, these especially. Um, and so let me close up my and re-zero my caliper out. So from hole to hole, they're a little under eight or about seven, seven, seven millimeter. And then if I do them from side to side where they're a little wider, they're a little over 7.5. This one's 7.6. So they run like this one here. Yeah, they're about, mm -hmm. they're pretty even. This one is a little taller maybe. So um, so about seven to seven and a half millimeters is what we're looking at. Okay. So to get this show on the road, to get this piece started, Janice, mm -hmm. what we did or what you did was, then you can see here at the beginning, this this button, and I'm going to get a little closer down. This button is a button that has the two holes mm -hmm. in it, right? It's like a, mm -hmm. it's not a button with a shank, though you could yeah. use a button with a shank if that's what you have. But this is the button that has the two holes here. Right. And the tiara cast buttons, you can see, they, they bow just slightly that's all right so you could have the bow part going down if you wanted or going up i don't think it really makes a difference but what you did janice is you had it bow slightly up which is probably what i would do as well so let me i'm going to undo this leather i so honestly the, kate don't think i even thought about it oh <laughs> okay or that <laughs> no, uh, or don't think about it exactly. i don't think I don't think I really did. If it had a, a very specific direction in it more than this button did, then I would have, you know, mm -hmm. uh, thought about it. But even still, it doesn't really matter because if you make the whole size that it's going to fit through the button loop, it's going to be secure whichever way you do it. Whichever way you do it, right. Right. And so what you did was you strung it on the leather. Halfway. And halfway. So it went to the center point. Right. right. And then we jumped in with our first silk wrap here. And this silk wrap is one of the skill builders that we have on Bead Shop. It's a real, um, it's a real um, easy one, right? Uh, and a real staple in our Bead Shop stable of techniques for sure. But with the Tahoe, what you were telling me, Janice, when we were talking about it is the Tahoe has instead of silk wrapping or you could go back and forth and do either or we use that transition that crimple right. tube that mm -hmm. um that holds all that leather together so right. you can go back and forth you could even macrame this if you felt like you wanted to macrame as well yes you could okay you could. so now here comes the part where we have to divide up our sealon so Janice, you were saying for each of these silk wraps, we're going to use about a foot. Yeah, and I would, yeah, about a foot, meaning you could make it like a, a little bit longer, um, but but not much. I would stick with 12 inches. I would cut yeah. them 12 inches and then you end up with one extra. Uh, yeah. In my design, if you have a, if you decide to put your silk wraps closer, you might use all 12. Now I'm sure there are many of you at home who have cord you could use that if you um, wanted more than I, than the kit uh, gives you, you could use some of your own cord. But I do think you need about 12 inches uh, mm -hmm. of cord to be able to make a silk wrap without you know, like getting all tied up with your thumbs. And so I would cut them 12 inches. Yeah. So you have um, 11 silk wraps in right. this piece. 
Right. Okay. And you can also, Adria just posted it, you can see there's a project page for this project. And if you go to beadshop.com collections, sisterhood, or if you just search sisterhood, you'll see a nice project map um, um, of this piece and you'll be able um, to take a look at it. But it's very, uh, it's very straightforward, very simple. This is a project you could uh, literally almost do. In, I, I don't. I shouldn't say an hour, but it's really maybe a two-hour project. Mm -hmm. So easy. It's really mm -hmm. easy. Yeah. No. I. I. I love how kind of simple, um, but the design is so effective. So when you did your silk wrapping, Janice, and I want to ask you how you did it. When you did the silk wrap, did you silk wrap, if you remember, toward the button or away from the button? I I do it the exact opposite that you do it. You always right. go, you, I think, and Brittany go to the left mm -hmm. and I go to the right. So mm -hmm. in, in for me, I make the loop in the direction of the bracelet and away from the button away so. from the button so this way yeah and right. i would naturally probably do it this way but let's go do ahead. it whatever way you want just yeah. make sure the longer strand is on top mm -hmm. so you have a short strand and you have a long strand mm -hmm. and the short strand is you want to wrap over the short strand and then pinch where you want it and you know if you can also before you tighten it all up, you can slide it up a little bit mm -hmm. if you need to. And then just like playing tennis, keep your eye on the ball. Uh, now I go the other way, Kate. I go over. You, you, go, me. you, go, you go this way yes, towards you. I do. But yeah. why don't you do it your way? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I like trying the different techniques. See, even just that one little change of wrapping towards me, I'm like, I think it's because when I wire wrap, I wire wrap away from me. Oh, so I'm okay. so used to doing this wrapping kind of away from me that towards me, I, I feel like I'm all thumbs, mm -hmm. but I'm going to do it. So see how you're just laying that one little um, piece of thread rotation of thread one next to the other see mm -hmm. that and decide just wire or not wire wrap silk wrap as much as you want here right so this is yeah. one, two four six eight maybe ten rotations yeah that's about right i if you just do it three or four you may not have enough security for that knot that's got right, a slip in the middle. Yeah. So I would make it seven to nine, somewhere okay. in that neighborhood, so that when you slide that knot, it looks sort of like a gopher under your lawn, walking, mm -hmm. you know, digging. But when you do that, you'll see it go into the middle. So right. So see how I, yeah. And the 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 reason I think Janice, while why you do the wrapping towards you, is that this thread naturally wants to just come up through the loop. See that? If I had gone the other way, I would be doing it reverse and my thread would actually be diving down into the loop. But towards me, the loop comes up, or the, the end comes up and through the loop. And now can you see how I'm holding this all together? I'm going to, I'm going to kind of hold my hand here to kind of maybe wrangle that thread so it doesn't come out. But watch when I pull. Now, this is when you're talking about how you see the gopher under the lawn. Yeah. See how I'm pulling with my left hand and cinching it. And see, there's the loop, right? And now what's going to happen is that loop captures the thread on the right. And it's just going to go right yeah. underneath yeah. those wraps. And you kind of want to, what I do is I kind of, make sure that that thread that's coming out at the right is centered. And then I'll just give myself a little bit of a tug. There we go. I felt it go. You can, if you hold your finger over the top, right? Um, you could feel that little knot kind of travel about halfway. Okay. 
now, then what you I can do. Also, Kate, mm -hmm. you can pull it all the way out to the left. Mm -hmm. and you can pull it all the way out to the right if you want. Right, right, exactly. Uh, and if you're learning to silk wrap, it doesn't hurt to practice seeing what it looks like for the knot to come all the way out uh, to the other side and right, then pull we'll it back it right in. There. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you and want it in the middle. If, yeah, if you do that, if you pull it too far and it comes out, let me see if I can do that. Mine's nice and tight, so, um, but I could feel the knot is right here. Mm -hmm. What I would do is I'd just pull on the other end, as mm -hmm. you say, like this, and I could see, I could yeah. feel it slip back. Yeah. You want to, you want to make this wrapping of your threads nice and tight, but not so tight that when you go and tighten your thread underneath, that it becomes warped looking, you know, um, because you're not, your loop and stuff is going to eventually come underneath here. And sometimes if it's just a hair too tight, your silk wrap starts to look untidy, right? So you have yeah. to have it not too loose, not too tight, but just so it just doesn't have too much play, but it does it, have a, just it's a tiny firm. bit of room. If it's yeah. too tight, it can also dig into the leather. Right, and it won't look so nice. Yeah, yeah, I would be, I mean, it should be firm. Let's mm -hmm. not, uh, it, I don't want to imply that it should be loose, but you right. don't no. want it so tight that it becomes like a zigzag. Uh, right. And you can see it looks sort of like it's just too tight. You'll know it. Yeah. And you can also see right there how, see how there's no gapping between my leather and my wraps. That's another telltale sign, I think, mm -hmm. if you have gapping there like if your first wrap or your last wrap wasn't very tight you'll you'll see that gap in between your thread and your leather just take it out and redo it at that point you can't really tighten those those loose loops away but now once uh once it's done now we can just clip it clip it away right you could mm -hmm. also if you're freaked out about not having any glue on this you could put just a tiny drop of GS Hypo Cement before you pull the whole thing underneath. But I'll be honest, I unless I'm silk wrapping with leather, like with the 0.5 millimeter leather cord, I never glue. I, I don't glue either, but I, I don't. I don't look down as I know you don't. We don't look down on people who feel like they need to glue. No, 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 so, not at all. Not at all. If you feel like, especially yeah. if you're not super sure about the integrity of your wraps, a little bit of glue there will go a long way to kind of helping it, helping stabilize that wrap. Um, but if you're not a gluer, don't feel like you have to glue it, especially right. if this is nice and tight. And you can see, you could thread burn it, or as you can see, I just did, I cut it um, under tension. And you want to make sure when you cut it, and you can't really see where I cut it because I cut it nice and close, yeah. but you can see there's a little bit of an edge right there. You don't, um, don't snip it. I've done this more than once when I come up and I cut, and then all of a sudden my silk wrap is coming apart because I... Um, <laughs> because I cut too yeah. close. Drea is commenting that she glues everything. So good job, Drea. And and glue the nice or, or not. Oh, well, for those who want to glue, the nice thing also about the GS Hypo is it has that really fine tip so that if you, as Kate said, you can put it on the loop as you pull it in. You can also, before you really super tighten it down, you could get that nice fine needle and put it between into the knot between the two legs of leather, you know, kind of stick the the needle of the glue in, mm -hmm. shove a little bit of glue in there, be careful it's not going to go on your leather, and then tighten the whole thing down. But right. I like you do not use glue. Right. Just and um and yeah, you know, and what I would do also before you do this, honestly, on your finished piece, get a piece of scrap leather and a piece of scrap um, Ceylon and do a couple of practice silk wraps just so that your your game that you're ready, right? Mm -hmm. So that your game is ready to go.
Do you remember, Kate, when we used to teach this at the bead shop and we used to save the toil the paper towel rolls? The and paper we'd towel rolls and we'd use the big, the really big three millimeter um, um, yeah. cotton cord. Cotton. Yes. And everyone yes. would get, everyone would sit in the class and they would see <laughs> This yes. this paper toilet, the not toilet paper, but you could use but toilet the, paper. Yeah, you could. You could use the a roll, roll yeah. but it was the inside of the of the paper towel roll. Yeah, that is, that is correct. Yes. Yeah, I think we actually showed that on one of our broadcasts, Janice, maybe way back I, when. I think so too. Maybe the kimono cord or yeah, or something. Uh, yeah, could have been the the first kimono cord one. Yeah. Now this hole in the pearl, um, yeah, I, I remember that standing and raise it above your head. Oh, yep, teaching that one. Um, there's a question I think Christine had on the measurements of the hole of the pearl. Um, yes. Drea is saying it's about two millimeters because this one millimeter, or I'm sorry, 1.5 millimeter leather um, goes through it just fine mm -hmm. with a little bit of play. So, um, so we're good. And yeah, Gita is saying that we did indeed do it on the Facebook Live, which does mm -hmm. not surprise me with our antics um, that we would get up to there. So, um, okay, so now with your sample here, mm -hmm. it looks like for every section, Janice, you used three, four, or three or four pearls, it looks like, maybe yeah. sometimes two. But it you have I'm gonna count the I'm gonna count the sections one two three four five six seven eight nine nine sections so if you wanted what you could do at this point is open up your pearls and open up your coil spacers and your donuts all of these and make nine little piles right? right but before you do that kate will you uh -huh. take the leather that you uh just silk wrapped on wrap uh -huh. it around your own wrist okay. and see how many times it goes around okay sure let me get this out of the way let me i should have had little dishes here so bear with me here let me get these pearls for some people, this will be a four wrap. Others, it might be a five wrap. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just important to just check sure. um, what your what so your goal here it is here. Yeah. And I'm just going. I'm actually going to take it out of range for just a second. It's a little bit easier okay. for me to wrap. Okay. So what I've got here is one, two three i've got four wraps here and as i bring around wrap number five now depending on how thick or how much room the beads take up i would say for me five wraps is going to be too small i like a little more room so i would probably end with four wraps is my guess for me okay now you're your piece did you make it a four or a five jp do you remember? i made it a five okay let me I see. say a five i don't have it in front of me well, but I'm gonna put um, it on and see. i think i made it a five and i cut off maybe like i i didn't need maybe half an inch of leather so here so you can see the one that you did and my wrist is six and a half inches so you can see I'm I'm close, but it's not quite the way I like a a, a wrapped. Fit. And that's five, right? Mm -hmm. This is this yeah. would be five, yeah. Okay. So if you have a wrist that, and you said you cut off a little, so maybe that little may have been yeah. enough to to close yeah. that up. But again, just like everything else that you know when you're making this kind of bespoke piece, right? Um, uh, these just don't, um, you have to keep trying it on is what I want to say, right? Yeah, um, and, and, uh, you know, I just want to add, Kate, that we all, you know, like my wrist is also six and a half, but then 
the, how our arm, you know, graduates mm-hmm. up also makes a difference. Mm-hmm. And also what makes a difference is how loose or tight you want it. Right, uh, exactly. Oops. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I, it, it doesn't, it's not so bulky that you are off that much by how many times you want to wrap it. If it was mm-hmm. really solidly two full strands of beads, we'd have to err on the side of making it a four wrap rather than a mm-hmm. five wrap. A five, but yeah. check as you go. Let's see, let's see how, um, how oh, comes, can everyone yeah. hear the siren and my grandfather's clock? No, I can't. I can't hear it. Oh, it was the half. Maybe it was the half. The half hour. <laughs> um, and they're also asking, these pearls are, Lynn was asking, these pearls are exclusive to the kit. We found yeah. just the right amount. So we're always on the lookout for new large hold pearls. We have we have a few that are going to be coming, but these this color was so special that yeah. we thought um, that we would we would reserve it for this kit. So I'm sorry that they're not available separately, but we do have um, some of the cream. We have the gray. I think we've got the brown um, that you can play around with. We also have some large hold beads, large hold semi-precious beads um, that you could also throw into the mix here. Um, There's lots of large hold roller beads would look great with this. Um, Just depends on, on, Uh, on what you want to do. So this first section has something different about it that all others don't have. And that's where you put this charm on. Mm -hmm. You put it near the button. Mm -hmm. So what I did was I added the the jump ring onto the button itself. Um, But you could always add it on a little bit later, right? You don't have to add it first thing. No, you don't. You might decide it looks better you want it somewhere else. yeah exactly yeah uh, I'll get the rest of this you can put it anywhere but i'm going to slide this guy on okay and now what you did and it looks like these are about even did you measure your sections out at all janice or did you just kind of go for it no i i rarely use uh, like a measuring tape mm-hmm. Uh, but I will use my paper guides. Mm-hmm. So I will, you know, like I looked at the big thing was how many pearls did I have? Right. You know, you have to, you can't put eight pearls in the first section. You, mm-hmm. You've you got to like divide up um, how long the bracelet is going to be, how many pearls. I think there's 32 pearls. And then you have to say, okay, if I have four or five pearls per section, I have enough to do nine sections or seven sections. And that's about all the measuring I did. But yeah. what did you measure? It's about four inches? Yeah, the, the silk wrap starts at maybe about oh, three, three and a three and an eight, three and a quarter. And what's um, the, but next I, the next one, let me measure that. Curiosity. It's a little under three. And then this one is about three and three quarters. So don't, yeah, don't stress on making each of these exactly the same length. This one's about three and a half. So I think that what you say is uh, important. At this point, once you've kind of ascertained, okay, how many wraps am I gonna do about then, we said that this has about nine sections. So go ahead and divide all of these beads up into nine little piles. And you can use, if you have little dishes, you can use little dishes. You can also get your muffin pan from where we keep ours in the drawer under the stove. You could grab that and you can uh, divide all of these into nine little cups of your muffin pan um, and then just take them out and, and string with them. So, um, so that would be pretty easy. So let me grab some of the beads here and you tested each one. Unfortunately, we had a couple of beads that we wanted to add into this little beauty, um, that didn't fit on the, on the leather. And that's the thing. You kind of have to do a dance between what you want visually, what you want to fit on the leather 
um, as well as, um, you know, how everything kind of plays together and how it all balances. I'm trying to remember what those beads were. That we... Those are beads that we're going to launch later because we love them so much. Oh, those are those uh, little yeah. oval beads that yeah. we yeah. ordered and then, oh, shoot, it wouldn't fit on that leather. Yeah, yeah exactly. we were disappointed. Exactly. Yes. And just a reminder for those of you who are joining us a little bit later, our second kit drop will be at noon, 12 uh, noon on the um, on the West Coast. So if you're watching this live right now, it's 1115. We're going to go for about another half hour and I'll sign off um, a little bit early so that everyone will be ready for that kit drop. But again, if you miss this one, We've got some things planned for 2021 that you guys aren't going to believe. So mm -hmm. I'm sorry we can't make unlimited amounts of these, but you know, nature, push for creativity. Nature just doesn't have unlimited amounts of freshwater of pearls. pearls. I know, right? Right, right? Yeah. So let me go ahead and I'm going to lay out one of your sections. And again, remember this wraps so much around the wrist that it doesn't, you're not looking at each little one, um, each little section on its own. You're kind of looking at the whole picture that it creates. So I would have made my nine little, um, little piles of beads. Let's pretend that this is one of them. Maybe I've got these there. And then maybe I have my three pearls from my pile. And then I have two of these coiled spacers. I love these. You know, we've been using these coiled spacers in some fashion. Um, I don't know, forever it seems like. They're such a great, they're such a great bead. So what you told me, and I actually didn't realize this until um, I looked at the piece, you know, I should look at the piece like the week before the broadcast but uh, i look if at the you piece, have the time right i look at the piece the hour before the broadcast right so when i looked at it and when we touched base about it you said that you strung everything on one strand right and right. the other strand you left blank now did you go back and forth or does it matter do we have to really look at oh I can only string on this bottom one no, and then still wrap need, it together. I don't I it couldn't didn't matter. No. And I okay. you know full disclosure I did this silk wrap that you're you know the stringing of this next section that you're doing now. I you know the beauty of having a sample is I've worked through all the issues or whoever right. the designer is. I redid that um silk wrap probably six times i had to yeah. cut it off and redo it i strung on both pieces of leather i didn't like the way the pearls um were on the larger side and it made it too kind of out and in out and in um unlike the tahoe which has the two leather on the outside and the stringing in the middle Ooh, mm -hmm. oh i thought my phone was off um, <laughs> is that, is that, it's not me texting you. No, it's not, it's not you. It's Freda. Who's <laughs> like, oh. I know, I know. It's like, Freda. oh, I don't have anything to do. Let me, <laughs> <laughs> let me text Janice. See what I also did. What I didn't do at the very beginning was I angle cut this and stringing these were okay without the angle cut, but I felt like I wanted it. So mm -hmm. I just angle cut it just a little, just a smidge. And I love that um, Raquel, she just cheered me on and said, you got this. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love that. So, so right. So JP, I remember some different iterations of this that right. you would text and you go this yeah. one, and then we use yeah. these different beads, this one. And so then finally, um, when you came upon this one, I think that this is kind of the most elegant um, it's really elegant and pretty. I and I, the Thank large little pearls on the leather were just made for each other. And so I want. Here, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I go wanted, ahead. I wanted to use all the leather. If I made it a three wrap, I would have put more pearls into each section. 
Right. And when I did that, I found that gravity moved the pearls to like, down to the earth, so to one side. And then I had mainly leather on the top of my hand. The, mm -hmm. do this way where there are shorter sections, you have pearls that never really leave, like travel far enough that you won't see them as it wraps around your wrist. Right, so like for instance, Janice, if you had left, if you had made a section that was this long, with right. no silk wrap in between. Right. All of these beads would have fallen like this way or fallen that way. So you would have had like a long piece of just bare leather. But ding, the ding, shorter, ding, ding, ding. Yes. The shorter yeah. sections make those pieces, um, make the pearls stay where you put them, but still have yes. movement. Yes, exactly. Perf. So now I'm just going to jump in and make my uh, silk wrap. Now you were talking about a paper guide and I'm going to put a little paper guide here. Yeah. I've got, um, let me see. I've got, I've got a piece of note paper that I need to cut the note off of and then I'll use the rest. Hang on. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I have, um, I use a lot of note cards like this. This is a little Kate tip, a little index card. And what I do when I've always loved index cards when I was little and I think it was because my granddad taught school you know and he would have all these school supplies and sometimes he'd bring index cards home or things he would make flash cards and when he taught Spanish and I would steal them I would squirrel them away because I just loved index cards so what I have I have a bunch of index cards this is for flush setting it has nothing to do with what we're doing today but as I'm working at my bench, I use these index cards and I make these little notes on them. And then on the back, I don't have one here, but I could do a little drawing or stuff uh, on there to remind me. And it feels like an index card for me at least is a little more permanent, so I won't lose this. And then I have a little box, a little tin that I just stick these in so they're filed away. Um, so I don't know, it's a little, it's a little, um, a little That's tip. A clever for, idea. For me, for my um, things. And I've got, you know, I have them all. Um, if there's a specific uh, design I'm making, mm -hmm. let's see if I've got another one. I'll just, sometimes I'll date it, you know, and I'll say, okay, this is the, uh, this is the idea here. But I've got all of these little random, even with like, stamping with metal tape and stuff like that um but I'll, i have all of these index cards and it just feels a little more permanent to me like i'm not going to throw away an index card right i'll have that um and then i'll put it in my little card so get your index card okay i had a little note on here that i that i wanted to cut off um so i'm using a shorter one but you can or just a piece of paper it doesn't have to be anything too too fancy pants but you could get your pen and you could say, okay, I'm going to give myself a couple of little marks. Let's give myself a three inch and maybe a three and a half inch and maybe a three and three quarters inch. Whoops, right there. Okay, and then I can. Is the one up in the middle three and a half? I think it's three and a half, yeah. And that's three. There we go. We'll call it three and a half anyway. Because I was talking and measuring. I can't talk and measure at the same time. But let me double check. That's a little short. That was three and a quarter. There we go. So however your measurements want to be, mm -hmm. okay? And then as you were saying, you use your little card. If I wanted that to be about a three and a quarter wrap, I'll lay it right there. And I'll get my piece of Ceylon that I've done. And I'm going to do this the Kate way. I'm going to wrap it towards my left hand instead of my right. And I'm going to wrap away from me this time mm -hmm. because that's how I wire wrap. 
and I'm going to give it about eight, maybe seven to ten wraps. And then when I, okay, so this is where, let me show you this. Since I'm being a little cavalier about my wrapping and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here with my loop. I want you guys to see what happened here. If, and this is maybe when you, and I could probably get this closed, but see how my silk wrap loop goes around my leather, how my leather is coming through it, and yeah. see how my loop is crossed here. This is kind of a recipe for disaster. Okay? Yeah. So if I see that, I'm just going to undo it, and I'm going to be mindful about where I place this. So here's my, I've got a actually a little ruler tape right here, so I know that that's three. And what I do is, I lay that loop. See how I've laid the loop on top so the, the leather isn't going through the loop. That's really important. And also see how my top and my bottom, my long and my short strands also are not crossed. That's really important. So be present as you start that silk wrap and things should all work out. So Kate, how do you feel about let, showing if you were going to do your glue? Showing. Oh, sure, I'll glue it. Glue. Um, let me, I'm going to actually put this down. Let me, let me prep, let me get the glue because you've got to get your glue. Your glue's got to be right there, right? You've got to, mm -hmm. because when you're, um, when you're silk wrapping, you can't put anything down. You got to be ready. So I, I'm gonna, I stand it up in, um, you know, like a glass or something mm -hmm. so that it uh, doesn't spill over and I'm not touching it and it right. doesn't get all dribbly. That is a great idea. It doesn't get all dribbly. That's the right. theory. <laughs> well, let's, I'm going to have it all ready to go and I'm going to do that little, that little trick of yours. Let's see. I think I've got something to, you know what? I've got some tape. So I'm going to make a little glass with my tape and I'm going to put a little I'm going to put a little baggie underneath there so I don't drip on my board and you say what you do to prep it is I'm just going to put it right there we'll we'll pretend that's a little yeah uh, I'll put it right yeah, there I, there we go I want it to be sitting up higher, but yeah, you do. But it's but a, I don't have. Let me see. You could also put a little glue on a plastic baggie oh, and then use your, your to toothpick. Use mm -hmm. Here we go. This is better, I think. There we go. Yeah. My little. Okay. I've got a little tin. I'm still going to keep my baggie there just in case. Mm -hmm. There's my there's my lid. Okay. So now let's see if this silk wrap has, I think my, my cutters weighted that enough that I can pick that back up and continue my silk wrap. That was a clever tip. I've never done that. Well, I think I'm like, I need a weight of some kind. So yeah, it looks okay. And you can see, whoops, here's the wraps yeah. right there. And then let's go ahead and um, I'm going to put, whoops, see how if you don't grab it, it'll, it'll unfurl. So I'm just going to, I'm going to put it back. Make sure you're using your glue, you guys, in a well-ventilated area because I can start to smell my glue here. So I'm going to pull, let me get kind of tight on here so you can see this. I'm going to pull my loop. Let me go through, I've come, and remember how I, um, as I was wrapping, we go through that loop like so, and we're gonna 
pull on the other end to tighten that loop. Now, I don't want to tighten the loop completely. See that there? I'm going to tighten it just maybe a little bit more in anticipation of adding the glue. So there's my, there's my loop. Let me get that in focus. Okay? So now... Get that focused, okay. Now I'm gonna go and add just a drop with my GS. Yep. Stick that back straight up. And as I pull that knot. That connection is going to pull. My fingers don't want to pull today. There it goes. It pulled right underneath. And so now I kind of pull the other direction. And sometimes I twist the cords to make sure that they're not um, crossed underneath. But you can see the glue has come and gone down into, into the wrap. Now what Christine is saying, she has some acetone impregnated makeup sponges. And she sticks the end of the glue into the sponge. And then you don't need to put the top on until you're finished, which is a great idea um, to do that. I know Brittany does that too yeah. sometimes. But having that impregnated with a little bit of acetone um, is a great way to do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the tip of this and put the lid on the glue so I don't glue my hand to anything. And then what I would do next, Kate, is I would mm -hmm. make sure that my leather ends were both even. I would just, you can pull, you can still pull, maybe not so much if you've let them dry, mm -hmm. but up near mm -hmm. your silk wrap, you can mm -hmm. pull, you can sort of tug on each one individually. So one isn't like looping out in a, like a, right. Turn, yeah, so. no, I can I can move yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, I did that just now. And yeah, that's a great tip. slide. Yeah, and then you can see again. I had cut a little bit off that I may not have had them exactly even, but you can also see. Yeah, you don't want this bottom strand to be like way down here, mm -hmm. right? Right. And so what Cindy's asking, would you do the silk wrap on what would be the back of the bracelet to sort of hide the knot bump? You know what? I'll be honest. I can't. I mean, this might side of the silk wrap might look a little bit better than this side. But I think with everything going on, um, I personally probably wouldn't worry about it. If you wanted to try and make sure that all of the bumps go to one side, you certainly could. But I think, as Brand would say, it won't be noticed on a trotting horse. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Yeah, I don't. Now I'm going to come in and clip. Uh, to answer Cindy, I don't think there's a back to this. Yeah, I don't think so either. Sorry, a car just went by that was also kind of loud. Um. All right, everybody, calm it mm -hmm. down out there. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's like a parade going on. Something's happening. Okay, so there's that. Yeah. Okay. Cindy's saying, she says, I think I think too much. I think on this one, yeah, I think so. But you know what? It's not a bad idea to, mm -hmm. to think these things through. Because then if you've kind of looked at all of your options, you can go, yeah, that option, I want to make sure that's right. Or the other option is, oh, no, you know what? I don't need to worry about that, right? So if you cover all of your bases and look at it, then you can add what you need or take out and say, you know, I don't need that. That I don't need. So we would just continue along. Sorry about that. Sorry about that horn, but I closed the door to. Now, the... Kate, if you notice on most of the different sections I did, mm -hmm. I probably started and ended with like a shadow or mm -hmm. a smaller bead or two shadows so that they uh, they don't sort of like bulge out as much. Mm -hmm. 
no two sections are exactly alike. Some places I put two shadows together. Some places I put the coils, two coil spacers or a coil between two pearls. Um, I just tried to mix it up so it looks more artist and then this is the pattern. And But right. you certainly divide up all your beads and do uh, you know one or two patterns. You could do anything you want really. Right. So we don't need to, um, right. So as long as you have your little space or, or your little beads for that section, mm -hmm. um, if you start and end with a shadow to taper and mm -hmm. then add whatever you want kind of in the right. middle. Um, yeah, each one can be different or you could have them be a little more um, alike. Just depends. Like on this one, yeah, so you did a bunch of shadows right there on that one. So it doesn't, yeah, you you do what, what works for you. I'm going to add two shadows at the end of this one. And then I'll go ahead and I'll silk wrap one more time um, for this. And then Janice will wrap everything up. We'll look at the closure for this. I mean, this literally is the easiest. It's very, very it's, easy. It's just, I think the hardest thing is just, dividing the beads up and yeah if you can call that hard mm -hmm. i'll get my little paper i'll get my other piece of seal on here and i'll say maybe i'll make this one just a little bit longer maybe to there and i think as after you've done that first one when you come in to pinch your leather you can kind of tighten everything up as you do it like this uh -huh. right tighten it up and then i go okay i'm gonna go here so I'll do it from this side this time and wrap, making sure that my loop is on top of my leather, not around my leather. And again, it doesn't matter which one, which leather uh, strand, leather cord you string on, it doesn't right. matter. Um, but I suppose um, there may be some people out there that want to always string on the same one. I guess you could. Maybe you could darken the end of the leather on one of them with a brown right. marker so that you always strung your beads on that one. But I don't, I don't know yeah. how we would even know the difference. Yeah, I don't think it would make much difference. There we go. I can feel that pop underneath. Tighten that up, make sure it looks good. Pull both these strands a little bit to make it, there we go. That looks good. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just cut this. I wanna make sure that I don't clip the wrap. And now we're ready for the next one. Yeah, that's so it. As, that's it. So yeah. now as you're coming around, right? I mean, it's simple, right? Two down, right? Seven more to go. So if I was doing it, you know, with, with you. So let me, let me at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just now that I've done two, I'm going to wrap this around my wrist and just kind of eyeball the bulk and see how that will look. Mm -hmm. So I've got one, two three, four, five. I think it would be fine as a five wrap for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's fine as a five wrap. So what I would do, let's pretend that this has all of our beads on here, right? Um, all of our beads on and it's all done. I've wrapped it and then I kind of pinch my fingers here and then I'll unwrap it and I'll say to myself, okay, this is about where I want my first silk wrap to be right right so i'll just silk wrap it right and then after i've silk wrapped it i'll come in and i'll go okay here's my button and i want to make sure that the silk wrap that i make that the hole for the button isn't isn't too big you want it of course right. to slide through but you don't want it so big that it's going to slide through and out right so I would, I'd probably make your buttonhole, mm, maybe it's about three quarters of an inch opening here, maybe. And you can see on yours, let me go to the finished one. 
that's just how you did it here. You so yeah. wrapped here and kind of, you know, get your measurement, kind of pinch it with your fingers there and do your silk wrap here. And there's a little bit of, of room for, you know, because that, that bead does, or the button rather, does come in and kind of lock in. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to worry about it coming out. But uh, that looks about right. Hey, Krista, can you grab the door real quick? Okay, did um, I uh, mark the ends of the leather with a, a Sharpie? With the witch, Janice, sorry. With a Sharpie? I didn't, did I? No. Mm -hmm. No. But you okay. could. But you could. You could if you wanted. Yeah, yeah. you sure could. Yeah. So that's it. That's yeah, all she wrote. <laughs> that's as easy as it is. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and add the three of us back in here. So we're, or the three of us, you, me, and the bracelet. Right. <laughs> so we're together. <laughs> right. So um, I think it's a really terrific project. Again, if you guys are watching this on replay, uh, right now we're live on December 9th, and it's just uh, about 1140. The kits are going to drop at 12 noon. The, the rest of the kits will. Um, so, um, but if you miss it and you don't watch this live and you want to recreate this from bead shop uh, products, we've got, you know, we carry the, these, uh, the shadows and the, the donuts and the coil spacers. We carry some really nice large hole pieces, the rulers, we've got some large old pearls, things like that. Um, lots of different leather colors. So you could certainly interpret it uh, into your own colors as well. Um, but it looks, uh, I think it looks really, really great. I think it was a really fun project to create. Yeah. Any final thoughts, JP, that people need to know, or do you think we're about, we're good? I, I just think that at the end of this project, um, you will know how to silk wrap. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah. And, and I hope you love it as much as Kate and I loved putting it together and creating it. And that you'll share with us on the Facebook group what you made and how you made it your own. Um, but I'm very happy with it. I'm very pleased. Yeah, I, I really am too. Good. I think it's, it's really cool. fun. I'm, yeah. I'm going to remove this. So there we are. Let me yeah. make us here. There we are. Well, it was great. Now, um, I... Um, Someone's also asking, and Valerie, this is a really good question, and I'm going to show this. I don't know, Janice, if you can see that on your screen, but Valerie's asking, what's the best best method to ensure the bracelet will fit a gift recipient? Uh, is to use uh, two button loops mm -hmm. to uh, maybe make it a four wrap, Valerie, and um, the bra most bracelets are about, you would multiply it six and a half to seven and then add a second button loop in case mm -hmm. um, you had someone with a larger wrist. So you so have for instance, loop and then another if, button loop. If I have it here, let's say that we ended with the four wrap and I started, I'm just gonna do knots instead of silk wrapping. Right. But I could tie one knot here. Mm -hmm. Right. And I would go that three quarters of an inch. Mm -hmm. Maybe even a little bigger because. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. And I do that. Right. But that's and with the I do my a little bigger. Yeah. Right. And then I do my, my final. Right. One. Whoops. Or this. So if, but, if, you know, of course you could silk wrap it. but Right. Right. So if this is a very common way of doing bracelets, if you go to Chan Lu, go to her website and uh, look at some of the designs, many of the latter wrap bracelets have two button loops mm -hmm. so that um, so that it is adjustable. It looks a little um, to me, a little clunky if you don't use that second button loop. Um, and you, you could, could simply cut just cut it, it off. Away. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could put it away. But if you're mm -hmm. selling your things, it's always better to put the second one on, the second loop. And you can see here, 
or you could just surreptitiously ask the receiver. Um, you know, I was doing a survey on wrist sizes and my wrist is six and a half inches. Is your wrist the same? Yes. I don't know. You could you could do yeah. something like that. I don't know. Oh, so, oh, okay. I thought you were asking. Oh, yeah. No, like your your gift recipient. You could say, you know, I was reading this article that everybody has a wrist size that's between this and this. I yeah. Know. You could. You or could they can take a, a piece of string and measure it, and you you know you go you don't want it so tight it's like an elastic. Right. But you just want it to gently go around your wrist with the tape measure or with the string. What does your wrist measure? Right, exactly. You're making a custom piece. Why not ask? Yeah, yeah exactly. And people are also saying this would make a great guy bracelet, too. I think so, too. If you used, we have some really nice large hold, um, large hold semi precious yeah. beads that would look great. I think we have like the. Um, is it the Sodalite, the I, The Sodalite, and I think we also, it's either Bloodstone or Fancy Jasper or something. It's all, if you yeah. go to our large hold, uh, semi-precious, it looks, uh, there's a lot of those that would yeah. be a really, a really great, a really yeah. good one. So I'm going to say, JP, that we're going to wind this up so it gives people time to, um, yes. Drea is saying also, that the kit is listed right on our homepage. It's the very first item on the page in trending items. If you click on it now, um, it'll show sold out. So you wanna make sure and click on it after noon, after 12 o'clock our time. It'll go right into your cart and don't dally about, um, about checking out. So if you want other things, you can go right now to uh, bear with me here, right now to be, whoops, let me, Sorry, let me get rid of Drea's comment first. There we go. You can go right to beadshop.com um, to, to find information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. Of course, you can also sign up for your newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. Um, we still have some a couple of things coming out for December, so um, you'll want to um, follow that newsletter. And also, of course, the newsletter this morning had the information about this special kit um, from JP. Also, you guys, you can find us on all of our social, right on uh, beadshop.com on our Instagram, Facebook, our Facebook group called The Bead Table. And of course, if you're watching or if you like to watch us on YouTube, we love that you do. You can hit that subscribe button. Um, those likes, those shares, all of that really helps us. And we really appreciate every thumbs up, every yeah. like, and every share that we get. So I'm going to put us back on here. Um, so thank you, Janice, for that. We had a lot of fun today, I think. Yeah. Um, we're going to, we're starting up with some, you guys are going to see some new chain coming up soon. Um, yes. We have a fun project from Janice that's going to be chain. I have a couple of chain things. So stay tuned to your newsletters, everybody, because um, there'll be a lot of information about that. So we'll sign off. Thank you again. Wait, 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 wait. Before yeah. we sign up, uh, sign off, yeah. I just want to wish Chris a happy birthday. Yeah. Chris. Yes, Chris. Yes. Happy Chris birthday is, um, tomorrow. Yes, it's his yes. Big birthday special day tomorrow. So um, yeah. a big shout out to our Chris on his uh, special birthday. Yes. I need to figure yes. out what I'm making, but I think I know already what I'm cooking. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Never last minute. That's what we love Never. about you. <laughs> That's right. Never last minute. It's for sure. Well, thanks again, JP. And we, yep. um, I'll see you uh, next week on the broadcast. And everybody, uh, I'll see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday. Thanks so much, everybody. And we'll Bye. talk to you soon. Thanks so much.